Hi and welcome back to the Sea Butters channel. Today we're going to take a look at how to take a Nexus 7 2013 edition and have it replace the stock radio in your car. Uh, obviously everybody's car is different. Um, me in particular, I'm going to be doing this to my 2011 Mazda 3, Mazda Speed 3. Um, and I think I have a pretty good idea about how to do this. Um, and the method I'm going to use is probably going to be adaptable to various different cars. So uh, if you're watching this, you'll have to tweak some things for your own custom install. Um, but for the most part, you can take some of these ideas and use them for yourself. Uh, I've gotten a lot of resources off of both XDA developers, mp3car.com, uh, all the places you've seen uh, all this information before. But I'm going to show you my method. So uh, the first thing you're going to need is some sort of wiring diagram for your particular car. Uh, this is the wiring diagram for my Mazda Speed 3. So, um, the nice thing about my car is it automatically has a factory installed amp, which makes my life a little bit easier. Um, uh, the Nexus 7 obviously is not capable of pushing uh, amp, you know, a whole lot of power through its little speaker port to the speakers, so it couldn't directly drive the speakers. Uh, so you're going to need some sort of amp in your install. Luckily, I've got one stocked in the car. Um, so the next thing you're going to need is some sort of dash insert. I found this one on eBay. They have them for several different cars. What you're going to be looking for is a double DIN. Um, the double DIN is going to uh, be the right size to make a Nexus 7 fit. So here's the Nexus 7 2013 edition. Um, I'm able to take this and with a, a few Dremel skills get that in place uh, like this and you can see if I can push the button still it's going to be a really cool looking interface uh, you're going to be able to do a lot of different things with that um, and it looks pretty much stock let me turn up the brightness here so you can see things a, uh, a little bit better but uh, it looks pretty cool um, and is a really good solution. Uh, so uh, we'll go through the rest of the steps on actually getting this to work with your car. So I'm going to pop that out for now. Turn that off. Uh, one of the biggest things that you're going to need to do is A, um, you're going to need a custom kernel for this. Nexus 7 2013 device. I'm using a custom kernel called Elemental X. It enables you to use the on-the-go OTG um, cable plus charging and that's critical because if you want to gonna want to be able to drive cameras or um, a USB stick and also steering wheel control uh, you're gonna need to have the OTG in place. So you're gonna need this. This is a OTG cable available on Amazon, uh, OTG plus charging. And what that lets you do is plug this end into your Nexus 7 and plug in a charger into this port and then plug your USB devices or your USB hub into here. So um, let's just go ahead and do that. The other thing I've done is I've gotten this angled adapter so that's the first step off of this Nexus 7. And what that does is just gets the connectivity out of the way um, and lets me push it towards the back of the device. So the idea is that I'll have my insert, the Nexus 7 mounted, and I'll be able to have the on-the-go cable sticking up like this so I can kind of build around it. And then figure a way to secure <clears throat> these pieces on here giving it the double din and then mount all the available hardware inside this area and that will kind of give it the same shape and structure as the existing radio so it will bolt in and be a direct drop in. Uh, the other thing you're going to need um, is a harness specific to your car. So here's the harness for a Mazda Speed 3. And once again, you can match up the pinouts on here. Uh, like I said, my particular uh, car has an automatic uh, hookup for a radio. 
uh, sorry, uh, it's got an amp on it, uh, so I'll be able to plug the three and a half inch millimeter adapter. I have it going to the four different channels. Um, and so obviously you run into a problem here. The Nexus 7 is only two channel audio, but uh, cars are generally, you know, front, rear, front right, front left, rear right, rear left. Um, but really what you're going to have to do um, is just run the left and right channels uh, off of the 3.5 millimeter audio straight down into um, the amp so you won't have any control of forward versus backwards but you will get stereo sound on the right and left channels which is the real important thing. Uh, most people don't adjust the front versus rear balance, at least I never have and I'm not too worried about that. Um, so. I've wired these up and soldered them to go down to the ports that match up with my wiring diagram. <clears throat> so that's this three and a half inch port that will plug directly into the Nexus 7. Uh, the next thing you're going to need, uh, the problem you're going to run into with the Nexus 7 2013 is it uses quite a bit of power. You can't use any old charger to try to run it, especially when it's going to be installed deep inside your car. So um, the issue you're going to need is you're going to need to find a charger that is capable of charging the Nexus 2013 even when it's running at full power, full brightness, um, full processor speed. So you're going to need an amp, at least uh, at least two amps um, to be able to keep the battery topped off so you don't just run completely run it down and run it down in your car and then you're sitting with a dead Nexus all the time and you can't use it. So the one I found and has great reviews on Amazon is the PowerGen dual port car charger. It's got an Android point port and a non-Android port. You're going to want to use the Android port. Um, and this thing will push as much amps as you need. I can be on full brightness and still the battery will be charging. Um, so let's take it from there. So we'll have the Nexus 7 angled adapter which will plug into the on-the-go cable which will then be able to be charged off of this power gym port so I'm going to plug that into here okay and then this power gym port is soldered on through the wiring harness. This wiring harness will actually uh, accept, uh, actually pushes the 12 volt, the ground, and the ACC line. The ACC line in your car is when the key is turned and the radio is normally on, that's what tells it to be on is that ACC line. It's also 12 volt, so you can run power off of it. Um, so I've wired the ACC line to the pin, which is where the power goes, and the ground is on the side. This power gem port has grounds on either side. However, only one side of the grounding is actually wired up to the circuit board. So you can't use just any side of that. You're going to want to use the side of the power gem port, which is um, has a power gen on the top. You're going to want to solder it to this side because if you don't, um, you won't get any power. So, uh, and don't mind, this is a work in progress. Obviously it's not completely set up, which is why I'm filming now, because it's a, a work in progress. This is just part one. Um, so now that you've seen the basic pieces that we need, um, we'll also be running this USB hub off of that OTG cable and that will run, uh, in my case, I'm, I'm not going to probably worry about a backup camera in my car, um, but I will be running probably a 32 gig uh, drive or higher uh, that will route to the glove box so I can just pop a thumb drive in the glove box and watch movies, music, uh, whatever I need to do. Also, I don't have it yet, it hasn't arrived yet, but I've ordered a steering wheel adapter which will actually allow the steering wheel controls directly on my steering wheel should interface with the Android uh, ADB uh, setup on here. And uh, we'll probably cover some of that in part two, um, but so far this is the basic setup. Um, uh, so you, 
for the next things that I'm going to show you in the next parts, we're going to be covering uh, that adapter and also all the software. You're going to want your Nexus 7 device to go into some sort of sleep mode when it does not have power. Uh, otherwise it will just sit there and drain if the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth is on it sitting in your car turned on even though it's asleep it'll drain really quick uh, so you'll want to you know take some measures and I'll show you how to do that in part two thanks for watching and please subscribe so you can catch the next part of this and discover how to put a Nexus 7 2013 in your own car thanks